Okay, what we're covering in the next three short videos of about 15 to 20 minutes each is a manufacturer of some gang tooling so that I can utilize the, the rapid turn to its maximum. The rapid turn comes with quite a flimsy tool post. It doesn't provide a great deal of rigidity. Uh, it's uh, much better if you can uh, generate, you know, create a, a much stronger and more rigid platform for your cutting tools. This cuts out chatter and just helps in, in general. So the first, it'll, the first section will cover the manufacture of the plate which actually fits onto the mill spindle. The second part will cover the manufacture of the tool risers. These are the pieces of metal that actually hold the cutting tools. And the third part I'll cover part I will cover the use of the rabbit turn. However, the latter part may have to work because I'm recovering from surgery. So I've got to wait a month or two before I really get into any heavily heavy activities in the workshop. Things are okay though and everything went well with the surgery, so I'm I'm fine. There are a few other little bits and pieces that I should add here. Uh, one of the things that you don't see in the video is how I drilled the holes in the vertical column on the tomac. This was accomplished using a right angle drill and I, just using the jog controller, positioned the drill underneath the uh, vertical head, if you like, and brought that down in the Z axis using the jog controller a little at a time and drilled the holes out. It didn't take a great deal of doing and then I tapped it to take M12 bolts which are used to mount the, the, the tool itself. So without further ado I will process this video and get it on YouTube. Thank you. Well there you see the first part of my profile cut. The plate is Obviously it's too large for the machine to do in one cut so I programmed in for these to be cut as slots and cut them out that way. I've just got a cut along here and so on and this then goes up underneath here as part of my gang tooling setup. Uh, not sure really how f how mo how well it'll work, but we'll you know I'm I'm looking forward to keeping it going and giving it you know giving it a try. We'll see what happens. Um, it it can't be any worse than the single tool which is supplied with the rabbit turn. Um, I can understand Tomax not really wanting to sell gang tooling or market gang tooling for it because. It would kind of reduce the sales of their lathes, I think, so that's probably one of the reasons. But it would be nice to have a choice, you know, if people could then purchase it. But, uh, you know, I'm enjoying making this sort of stuff. It'll improve the workshop, so we'll keep going. Well, here we go on the other half of the program for uh, profiling this plate. It's a program I've written myself. It's the first time I've done radial or uh, circular interpolation. It seems to have turned out okay, but I want to be careful when we get through here. I just don't know what it, how it's going to react. But it, it, I think it'll be okay, but we'll just see. I'll slow down the the feed rate when I get to the end of here. It should go down first. And I think it's going to be okay. It's going down and back along. And it comes to the corner, goes around it. Looking good. Well, that's pretty good. It's the first time I've used it. Uh, I'm slowly teaching myself a little bit of decoding, self-programming. Uh, for this sort of stuff, it's nice and easy. It's only 2D, so it's very simple. Um, this is a pretty thick plate, so it's a nice way to cut it and uh, get a bit of practice. Okay, just using conversational to 
rough out a hole in the center of this. It's not going to be full size because I'm going to be fabricating it and then machining it the final size when I've finished. So it just uh, saves a lot of time later on uh, having to bore it out to a certain depth uh, and diameter. If I get it roughed out first, it saves a lot of work later. Uh, there you see the, the program on or the, the tool path. The program is very simple, just X0, Y0, uh, feed in the diameter that you want, the cutter, details, step over, all that sort of stuff. Very quick to do, I mean literally 30 seconds. And that's the end of the hole being cut. It's just gone through the bottom. Uh, always program it a little bit deeper just in case it leaves the few thou. Often more frustrating and have to knock it out and file it all up. So that's in here, it's just touching the edges now. I'm throwing more on the edge once and I'll do a clean up and that's it. Pretty good. Bit of chatter there, but now I'm in. That's okay. Not worried about the finish because it's rough anyway. The next job will just be to chew it up, square it up a little bit. There's a few pieces that just need straightening a bit. Not straightening, but machining uh, square to the column. So that's it. So just finishing one of the last of the plates that I need to make up my gang tooling uh, assembly. Uh, once this is cut, I will uh, dress it off. Rag it, as you used to call it when I was a apprentice fitter, get all the burrs off it. And I'll try to assembly everything onto the mill itself, and then I will weld in situ the plates uh, so that everything is nicely positioned so that I can return it to the machine to finish it off by using some of the pieces that I've already machined to ensure that it's nice and true and square. So we'll see how it goes once we've uh, welded it together. I'll uh, try and get some video of it assembled underneath the mill itself after we see how it see how the welding progresses. Well I've finished more or less finished the well I have finished the initial fabrication of the gang tooling adapter or plate. It's secured by four of the M8 studs or bolts that are through here into the, the main casting of the head and you can see there, maybe you can see, maybe not, the the heads of the almond screws, the cap screws. I had to, had a job getting them in so in order to give me some room to get them in I drilled these holes through here to give me access. It doesn't require removal of the coolant hose, so that, that stays there if, if you want it to. This here I'll probably modify, machine this flush, and uh, maybe arrange some left hand tooling on there, uh, right hand tooling on here. Never sure whether I'm correct in saying that. I think it's a left hand tool goes that towards the chuck, so that would be the left hand, that would be the right hand. Anyway, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's secured also to the back as per Thread Express's method. I, again, you can't really see it, but there's two countersunk M12 cap screws here and here running through this plate, this spacer plate. You get a better view here, running through a spacer plate. I wonder if I put some light on, you might be able to see it. Let's see, shine a light, shine a light etc. That maybe is a better view. You should be able to see it there, just here, and the other one here. And there's a spacer plate running through there. And again if I shine it up through here, yeah you can see the there's one there's one hexagon head bolt because I didn't have enough cap screws. I'll have to go and buy some more. But basically that's that's it. Next job with this will be to take it out of there. This was just a trial fit to make sure it sat fairly square. 
uh, it's maybe slightly off square there I, I, I think during a welding process everything shifted but it's very solid and I know that that distance is the same as that distance there as it was machined at the same setting so hopefully with luck I'll be able to square it up by sitting on this face and machining that side putting this against a, a right angle rather and machining that face but we'll see we'll, we'll play it by ear I'm sure it'll turn out okay. So here we see us using fast pilot conversational features to face the top of this gang cooling plate and it's that's a 15 south cut 27 inches a minute speed and it's it's coping quite nicely doesn't sound too stressed hopefully it should clean up the work on, on this this pass no, maybe one more so that's about 45 south out altogether so my planting when I welded it wasn't too good <laughs> but anyway it's it's not reduced the thickness a great amount uh, it'll look neat when it's completely machined so I'm quite happy with it ok well I've just set up a uh, conversational to drill the 45 holes that I'm going to put in this plate very simple just feed in the X and Y coordinates for each hole um, in theory it should be fine. What I will do though is just I've set Z a little high for the spot drill just to make sure it is actually going to work okay. So what we'll do is we'll uh, click the start button. Here we go and cycle up the feed. And we should have everything running soon. And we'll see. And that seems to be working fine there. So if that's working okay, we'll uh, stop the program there. Oh, I don't know what that was, something fell off the end. Ah, my oil can. Yeah, everything seems to be fine there. Go on, let's look at everything. It looks okay, looking at the path, it's nice and symmetrical, so I think I'll call it a day on that and we'll set the tool height correctly and run it again. Okay, well here we go, we'll hit the start button and I'll just get a hold of the last bell, just in case, but I'm pretty confident everything's going to be fine. And you can see, there we go. Lovely job. Nicely spotted. Most of the holes will go right through. Have to be careful around here in case it pops through just on one side or other of the metal. So I'm only going to go to 7 8 which will, should be okay. It shouldn't uh, cause any problems for the drill. If it does go slightly through, it won't snap it or anything. It has says heat. So we'll see what happens when we get with it. If they need deepening, I'll just do it at another session. I'm drilling these tapping size for an M12 bolt and the idea is we have a matrix of holes here so we can move the gang blocks along one inch at a time and also up and down to suit the, the, the tooling that's going to be in there. So that's it there, Look, that looks pretty good so far and then it will should in theory stop at the end of this uh, row and uh, go back up and tell me to change tools. So, and you will notice now that compressor is much quieter than my workshop. The reason being I've got rid of the noisy one, it was driving me crazy. I've got a silent compressor and it is silent. Okay, there we go. It's time to insert a 10.5mm drill. 
tool number 43 which I've already got in here as you can see so we'll do that and set away again there we are and it's working fine It's almost finished, three more holes to go after this one. And it's so far been okay, I had a, a, a real hard spot in this steel. I don't know why, but this hole here, through hole, um, it really grabbed a bit towards the end and it struggled. I, I had to stop the machine and restart on hole 38 after tightening the chuck and, uh, and checking everything out. Eventually I got through that hole, but I don't know what, they, there must be like a hard patch in the metal. I've never seen that before. But I'm sure that's what it was, because it's drilling okay there now, as you can hear. It's quite comfortable, and I haven't changed anything. Oh well, anyway, that's the drilling done just about. Well, I'm trying the tapping head for the first time. I'm just doing the through holes. Uh, this is the first time I've really used it in anger for such a large thread. That's an M12 thread and it's, uh, it's working really well as you can see. Uh, it was all done using conversational. Um, very quick to set up I suppose. It took me a little bit of figuring out but probably about half an hour just messing around until I, I had plucked up enough courage to hit the goal button but uh, it's done quite well as you can see. So I programmed the other through holes and I think I'll just tap the blind holes by hand because I, I'm not so sure that I want to risk breaking a tap in the, in a blind hole. Well that's me just doing the last of these tapped holes. This one here I tapped by hand just to see how good it, how tight it was or how hard it was going to be and that's what decided it for me. As you'll see I'm actually tapping the blind holes here. I'm only tapping them 5 eighths deep but it's a nice guide to finish off that last eighth of an inch. Uh, the type of tap I'm using pushes a, a cutting ahead of the tap. So obviously you don't want it all binding up in the bottom of the hole and binding up on the tap and eventually breaking it. So that's all I've done with it really. Uh, hopefully everything's correct and it should miss this last hole. Looks like it's going to. There we go. Lovely. That's great. That's a really good time saver that and there's a lot of holes there to tap. I think I'll have to make a sub plate for the, uh, to protect the table on this. That's the next big tap. Well, here's a different setup. I'm using the press to face off the front face of this so it's true to the column and vertical. Uh, it's about the only way I can think of doing this in situ. Um, once it's done I'll then start thinking about uh, bolting a plate onto here with dowels so I can mount the quick change tool post. Uh, it seems to be ok, so just to uh, use the, this hijacker program and adapted it uh, just basic simple G code telling it to move along between X and Y a certain distance and then lift up an eighth of an inch. Um, so on. Yeah, it's going ok. Obviously it's not cutting much because it's uh, the only cutter I've got is this, I think it's a high speed, it could well be cobalt, I can't, uh, uh, can't remember if it is, it's probably cobalt but anyway, it's the only cutter I've got and I just want to take my time with it, only 8mm cutter and that's the maximum size that the press will take and I'm running it on the slower speed as I can, which is still well within bounds for this cutter I think. But, uh, I don't want to burn it out, especially where the welds are because it's a hot. Well, that's the last facing cut of this face here. Uh, it's not a bad finish given the precarious nature of the setup. Uh, as you can see, there's not an awful lot of grip in that one there. You know, 
um, quite a long overhang of tool. I'm not quite impressed with the crest spindle because it's pulling an 8mm an 8mm cutter, uh, three loop cut, cutter there, and it's running at about 20,000 RPM. Um, it's it's not done badly at all, it's really cope with it well, and it's taken depths of cut of 30,000, and it wasn't really put much strain on it at all. I'll probably take a bit more, you know. Uh, certainly in aluminium, you could get away with maybe 60,000 cuts. Uh, it, it, I'm very impressed with it. It's worked great, you know. Okay, well now we've got the, as you can see, stood on the floor, on its uh, end. The gang tool and plate or fixture that fits on the mill. The two holes in the very bottom, here and here, uh, go. And there's a piece of bar that fits underneath to bring it up to the same centre height as this, to the same height as this. Long bolts, through bolts, through there, tapped into the two holes drilled and tapped into the bottom of the the spindle head, and the bolts that you see there, the bolt holes there, they fix into the bearing housing retainer on the bottom of the spindle. I only use four. I leave two in uh, because the uh, the heads go below the, the head of the, the retainer uh, and I put extra long bolts on four of them and that holds everything square and as you can see here on the top or the, the front face this is the plate that I'll use to hold the uh, quick change tool post from the lathe the tapped hole that you see in the bottom or top right hand corner that's where the, the post fits um, I had to machine that thread using uh, using uh, path pilot and a rotary cutter but it, it's a beautiful thread, come out lovely and I'll probably put some more holes in on the front face uh, once I decide similar to these holes here that you can see on the face that uh, will be facing the lathe chuck um, that way I'll have full interchangeability of uh, various bits and pieces. Next phase I'll be to make a couple of tool holders will fit into those holes on there and then I'll be able to give the lathe a good try out. It it's, it's desperately needs some good tooling, you know, uh, some rigid stuff and this is certainly rigid if you look at the thickness of that plate. The welding's like scrambled eggs as usual but it's, uh, it's pretty solid. Uh, it'll, it'll stand the test of